thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to show you four or five tips just to end some crafting frustration. If you do altered books or art journals, just some ideas that I have, some things that I do just to make my process a little bit easier and keep me from pulling all my hair out. Um, first one, I like to use Mod Podge and I like to use varnish. I have the jar of Mod Podge with the big lid and um, after a while the lid starts to get gummed up, the lid doesn't go on tightly, it gets that film over the top, then you get all the goobers in the Mod Podge, and your hands are full and you're ready to use your Mod Podge and you got to put everything down and open the lid and set the lid down and then I lean in it, I just, I get so frustrated. Well, the other thing that happened was varnish. I had my jar of just Waverly varnish from Walmart, you know, nice jar about this size, open. I was varnishing a page and as I'm varnishing along, what did I do? I knocked over the entire jar of varnish. It went all over my workspace, all over my table, all over my project. Had to clean it all up, lost half of my varnish to um, not being able to scoop it back up or save it. So I came up with this idea and here's, here's what it is and hopefully it'll help you. Um, I shared it with my mom. She loves it and um, hopefully it'll help you to have way easier crafting. Dollar store. I go and I got 10 ounce, 10 fluid ounce bottles of dish soap. These labels peel off relatively easy and then if you use um, hand sanitizer to get the goop off takes only a couple minutes to clean off all three of these la labels. I put the soap into a mason jars so that I can just use it in my kitchen, you know, for doing dishes. And I filled, I got five of them, and I filled them with my products. And then I used a Sharpie and wrote on it. So I've got Mod Podge, I've got varnish, I've got my white gesso, I've got black gesso, I've got clear gesso. They're a perfect size, they fit nicely in your hand. They're not hard to fill. You don't have to use a funnel. The top of it has a perfectly nice size for pouring whatever the liquid is into it. It doesn't spill out over it. I do it over the sink anyway just for neatness. Super easy to refill. I keep my extra one that I bought from the store just in a you know, box of all my extras so that I can fill them up as I need to. It lasts a long time. I do a lot of art journaling and altered books and this 10 ounce bottle lasts a really long time. What I absolutely love the best is easy to grab it, flip it open with one hand. There's no lids to monkey around with. There's no goobers in your product that those little bits that dry up and then get into it. And then when you brush it on, you have these chunky things everywhere. If it falls over, it doesn't spill. Even when it's full, it doesn't spill. And if it does, it's maybe one drop. Um, you can put one drop right onto a paintbrush. You can put a whole bunch on the paintbrush. You can put it right on your journal, right on your book page, right on, squeeze it right on as much or as little as you need. Use your brush to uh, smooth it out. Lids close, ease, close easy. They fit nice into a tote bag if you want to go to a class somewhere. And like I said, they're labeled, so you've got all your stuff sitting right in front of you, easy to get to. I need some gesso, we pop it open, and off I go. So um, hopefully that'll be something that you might want to try if you're like me and you hate spilling your liquid stuff, ruining your desk, ruining your project, or trying to get those jars open that have now decided to seal themselves, um, you know, with a death grip, then give this a shout. It's a really great idea. Uh, my next one is stencils. If you're like me, I love stencils. I use them every single day. I use them in my art journals, on my altered books, in making tags. I use them with modeling paste. I use them with paint, inks, chalks. So they get a lot of use. And if you're like me, despise, despise, despise cleaning them. It's a pain in the neck. You get acrylic paint on it. I'm really good about quickly going to the sink. And cleaning it off but still I'm scrubbing 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 and I can't get the paint off I used black or bright purple or something and it's really hard to get it off have this that I've used it's from the dollar store as well it's called totally LA's totally awesome it's a degreaser cleaner I use it in my house for cleaning kitchen cleaning bathroom love this stuff I had it sitting there in the kitchen sink when I was <laughs> 
sweating and scrubbing and trying to get the ink. I think it was Tim Holtz Distress Ink. I was trying to get off of my stencil and it just wasn't coming off. I tried hand sanitizer. I tried dish soap. I tried everything and it was just not working. I reached over. I grabbed this. I sprayed both sides of it. Took my little toothbrush, started to scrub it. Whipped it off. Cleaned it. Cleaner than clean. It looks brand spanking new. So, again, dollar store. You can get this for a dollar in the spray bottle and it is 20 ounces but then you can also get a giant giant bottle of it for three or four dollars to refill this so if you like your stencils clean and you don't like to do a lot of work in scrubbing and cleaning them i still don't let the product dry in there especially modeling paste but if something happens and you're working along in a project and you forget to and you put this in spray it both sides with this stuff put it in your sink walk away for 10 minutes or so come back it's pretty awesome it does it awesome is the name of it and it is awesome it works great so um, next would be and you're probably gonna laugh tapes I hate trying to start my tape rolls I don't like the fold under because then you have to waste that whole spot of it because where it's folded under you can't unfold it so you got to cut that part off or put it across and then you know cut that spot so what i do i save all these plastic things from when i get new products i save them for a couple of reasons here's a tip don't throw this stuff away save it this is an awesome clear window in an altered book so you can put it between pages with a cutout of a shape a square a heart and have it show one page to the next for a window or another type of window in your book. So save all these pieces in a box. They're awesome. But then up at the top, where the little hanger is, I cut little triangles out of it. I keep those parts too. And yep, you guessed it. I use that for my tape. I just take a plastic triangle and I stick it to the edge of my tape. So you've got this wonderful triangle that lifts right up can use your tape and it peels right off so you just put one on each roll and when you use your tape and you get to the end you put it back on the edge it stays like this it flips up it's easy to find where it's at it's easy to have something to grab on to pull and it's easy to come off so I use that on any kind of tape duct tape masking tape electrical tape and I use all kinds of tape um, the textured tapes that you use for like drywall I use in my books but again make a little triangle stick it on there and there you go you've got a perfect tape pull that you can keep using every time you use this roll so another great tip okay and then the last one I have for you is napkins do you use napkins in your art journals and altered books and making tags a lot of people do for collage it makes a beautiful beautiful texture it's one of my favorite things to put down i just i love the feel of them after the the um matte gel medium or the mod podge dries it's just it's an awesome feeling most people sit and try to fuss and try to get these edges apart and you sit there and you try and try and try and you can't get the edges apart i've even seen other people's videos where they're doing something and they're showing a technique and here they are and they're trying to get the napkin apart scotch tape grab a piece of scotch tape put a little tiny bit right in the just a tiny tiny bit in the corner oops i ripped it but there you go put a little in the corner and then put another piece here i'm trying to show it and it's fighting with me this is a really thin napkin so it may not work and then pull the two apart and look what happens it pulls right apart super easy you don't have to fuss with it and then um, another tip I just thought of that would be a great one to share so say you want to use this napkin and you only want this pink flower right down here you only want one little pink flower hold on a sec let me grab a brush what you need is a water brush take your water brush and go around that flower with your water brush Okay, so what you're basically doing is wetting the napkin, but just around what you want, and it pulls right out. So there you go. Now you have your flower singly by yourself. If you try to, if you try to pull it, like say, okay, now I want to use these yellow flowers right here, and you try to tear it, 
Napkins are not always very forgiving. They're not always easy to tear. You tear other things. It doesn't always tear the way you want it. You can do it. It works. If you don't have a water brush, use a paintbrush and a little cup of water. You don't have to have a water brush. You could use a, a brush and water. But it's just so much easier. If you have uh, the napkins that have all different designs and there's something in the middle, just do the water trick. Go around the design and then just basically pull it out really easily. The water just wets that fiber and there you go. It pulls it out. It's so simple. It makes using napkins so much easier and they dry relatively quick. So, you know, put it aside. It'll dry and you use it for next time. So those are my tips and tricks for today. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope they gave you some ideas for just things to do and ways to keep your table clean. Trust me, this one's awesome. And I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I will put a link to my PayPal account um, if you feel guided to make a donation to help me in my art journey is along this path. Uh, I am so grateful for any donations and anything that comes my way to help me buy supplies and keep making videos so that I can keep doing this and sharing it with other people. So have a blessed day and like, subscribe, share, join my channel, sub subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that too. I'm just um, getting started with my YouTube channel, so I would really appreciate it. Have a great day and go create something fun using these easy and fun tips. Making it easier. Thanks. Bye.